All the time. Come on, God is good. He just healed an elbow. Come on, he just healed um, different um, things of sickness in um, kidneys and stuff. So we just thank God for how intentional he is. Amen? Are we live? Yes. We are live? Remind me to tell you something afterwards for Avery, okay? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So, I didn't want to plan on preaching tonight. You know, Prophet's been on a thing, but Prophet uh, has some responsibilities and some um, things that she had to do with um, the business and work and stuff like that. So, uh, she's texted me today as soon as she found out. And so, I was like, okay, Lord. What are we going to do? And um, what do you want to release? And so I've seen a lot of combating of witchcraft. Like we've seen witches, not just from the state of Georgia in this area, but we've seen it throughout the nation. And, I, and they are gathered together. A lot of times people want to focus and if we want to look at Halloween. That's the only time that we really start to focus on these things. But look, there's something uh, uh, ahead of us that is great and the demonic realm understands it. they understand to the best they can okay they see people posturing themselves they see people truly not um, just coming to church now um, just to check it off their list and uh, go back about their marriage they see people starting to cast out devils on the job site they see people starting to um, win the sick and the lost in the, in the world right and so the enemy don't like that because every time um, that you win one from their camp, that means they're no longer master, but they have come enemy with them, and the, ooh, that's when they come into the kingdom, right? And so with that, um, the Lord spoke to me about the spirit of witchcraft, and He has been, and I just, you know, I've been praying, I've been, I've been looking to the Lord, okay, what's next, how's this go? And so um, I love how He'll just put things together, amen? Amen, amen. He just, it's, it's Him. If there's somebody's need that's affecting them too, I'm going to pray for it. I say be made whole in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Amen. So, Father God, we thank you for your word that's alive and active. We thank you, Father God. Yes, Lord. We thank you, Father God. I feel the resistance. Father God, right now, we fight this in worship and we fight this with the Word of yes, God. Lord. We don't take in, we don't go to a uh, 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 fight in the supernatural with our hands. But Father God, we come with our heart postured to you. And Father God, it says that you go before us. So Father God, you already knew this. And Holy Spirit, you was already here. So we hand every aspect of this over to you. And Father God, even Father God, as you have mantled us, Father God, we cast our mantle ahead. Father God, because the mantle is for the assignment. And Father God, the supernatural empowerment, Father God, of the Holy Ghost, that the blood, right? Right now, the blood be against you, and I command every spirit right now that's trying to approach. Right now, you can't cross, you cannot interfere, and you will not stop the living word from going forth in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, you said that you would touch my tongue and you would fill my lungs. And Lord, I thank you right now. Have your will and way. Put me to a side. Father God, burn dust it up and allow the originality to come forth that you're penetrating fire shall hit every fiery dart, shall block it in the spirit realm, shall allow your glory, Father God, to reside over Commerce City throughout the southeast in this nation. I even say to Kenya itself, I prophesy right now that the glory is filling this place, it's filling every area, it's filling every home, it's filling every workplace. I command every soft spirit, every soothsayer, right now I say your power is broke by the authority of Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Spirit of witchcraft. So we'll look at 1 Samuel 5, uh, 15 and 23. Little context. This is where we know King, da um, king David uh, right before he's anointed uh, as king. Before Samuel goes to him, Samuel goes um, to King Saul. And, and this is, he, he's, he tells him, he says, For rebellion is the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness as iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he 
also has rejected you from being king. Amen. That hits me. I don't want to take in. Uh, I, I, anytime some, you hear people say, well, that's Old Testament. No, I'm I, I understand it's Old Testament. But it says every part of Scripture is here to do its work. And I understand it's a foreshadowing of what's coming and Jesus has paid the price. But the one thing I want you to hear here, it says, because you have rejected the word of the Lord. See, Samuel had to bring the word of the Lord to him. But now we have the word of the Lord as sons and daughters. Amen? Amen. And so, that's the first time I highlight, but for rebellion is the sin of witchcraft. So I want to teach you a few things about um, when it says rebellion, Virtue says, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it my, what I want. I'm going to do it. I got free will. I'm here to tell you, when you understand, you start to mature in Christ, you understand the moment you said, not my will, but your will, your will now is His. You don't have free will anymore. You do have a choice, but if you're truly in the kingdom, your will should be what? Restored to the will of the Father. So just any desire, passion, or um, uh, appetite I have doesn't mean it's good. Amen? And so when we look at this, um, we can't do what we want. Some of you not even need to tell yourself that. I, I can't do what I want. Amen? See, sometimes God's... And I'm not speaking about building a ministry. I'm talking about living um, in this life as God has ordained and predestined. Some of you are business owners. Some of you have access um, to kings. Uh, and what I mean, kings is a little... Okay, as like the government officials. Some of you have um, teaching abilities, whether it's in college or in the um, public school or uh, um, these different areas, right? Or um, local government, all these things. See, when you have been positioned... You ain't there on accident. Amen. And just because God or somebody prophesies you'll be a, a business owner or you'll own companies or something like that, I don't mean you just Google and say, okay, I'm gonna, I want to be a uh, the next uh, uh, bakery. And you do it the way everybody else done it. The cool thing is what I've learned about us being kids of the king. Amen. Whew, Joy's in the room. I can tell when it comes. When, 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 when truly... We become kids. Look, we don't sit back and look how the world's done. God will pull us up in the midst of His mind. And He'll say, look, there's a word inside of you I want to speak to. They're not doing it this way. It don't look like this. In other words, He'll give us supernatural strategy for a supernatural vision. Amen? Amen? And so look, everybody's going to be like, nah, you probably don't want to do it that way. That don't even make sense. Who did that before? I don't know God spoke it to me. Amen. And see, this is what we want. That one way of intercessory, a lot of times we see things when it comes to intercessory, we look at it as, okay, um, uh, now I, I'm just going to pray, pray, pray that this thing shows up some, um, as far as like um, we pray for the sick and we intercede, right? And we push that on through. But sometimes He gives us ability to have a burden or even give us something that's in, um, that kingdom wants to be built and we pray that thing through. Does that make sense? You can't build what you don't know what to build. That's true. we got to tap in supernaturally. And He'll tell you, I'm telling you, sometimes it's weird. Sometimes it's, it don't, it's awkward. Uh, how in the world? It's like, go get a baptism pole in the midst of a pandemic. But God knew people was going to get saved, right? He knew who He was drawing. He knew who people had already been planting and watering those seeds. And He knew for the divine moment, this is the greatest time uh, uh, for truly the kingdom people, not just for a ministry, but I prophesy this. There will be baptism pools at, um, at jails. There will be baptism pools that begin to come um, to businesses. There will be baptism pools that begin to come to high. I don't know if there's somebody watching now or later on social media or whether you're in the room uh, but the, the Lord spoke to you about building that Christian I see like a, a Christian I say center but like I'm um, teaching for schools for kids build it but build it the way he said build it amen it ain't gonna look like the world's amen amen he said they turned the world upside down Adrian that what it, the word says so that means everything in the world is going to look upside down to the kingdom. Make sense? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Alright, so you can't say, I'm going to do what I want to. 
If you look and, and, and truly look at how those scriptures wrote there, I know it says now, uh, and, and what we've got it now is his father been translated for us. Um, uh, it says, is as the sin of witchcraft. But if you look back in originally, it means rebellion is witchcraft. Not is as, it's witchcraft. Amen? So, let's, uh, let's, let's break that down. What's witchcraft? It is seeking to manipulate, in other words, control a personal gain. That's manipulate. Events, people, or the future by consulting the spirits of the dead. So this interaction with de- this is interaction with demons. Rebellion against God and refusing to accept and obey His word is the sin of witchcraft. Remember it says, because he rejected the word of the Lord. Okay? I'm going to try to teach you just for a moment for our... I step off the stage. Um, so, thank you, Holy Spirit. So, this is rejecting God's word, God as Lord. What's Lord? Leadership and authority. An attempt to make the things work out your, uh, our own way. When we are rebellious, it opens up the door for witchcraft. When doing so, we remove ourselves from the protection of God and we step into destructive power and influences of Satan and evil spirits. How do I know this? We go to the next chapter when um, David is being anointed as king. At the same time, it says this in 1 Samuel 16 and 14, but the Spirit of the Lord, capital L-O-R-D, Depart, departed from Saul and a distressing spirit from the, uh, from the Lord troubled him. What is he saying? Look, he was anointed as king but because he rejected the word of the Lord, he moved himself out from underneath uh, of the anointing that God had on him. Now only at this time, he's not like what we have now, the spirit abides in us, right? At this time it was only upon them, upon him as king. So what we have to understand, we still have to be um, conscious and clear to God um, because just because the Spirit abides in you doesn't mean you can't step out of fellowship with God. Make sense? In other words, the moment you reject the Word of the Lord, if I was to have an umbrella right here, correct? And I was to, it was raining, right? And I was to move it out from me, I'd get wet, Right? It's took me out from underneath the protection of getting wet. It's the same thing with God. The moment we reject His voice, because that's the cool thing. I don't live a dead, dry religion. I live in a relationship and He speaks audibly. He speaks through people, places, and things. He speaks through nature. He speaks through multifacets, right? And so with that, uh, I, I, I got to tell you, He speaks to me continually. But sometimes we as people of God, if we ain't careful... It ain't the way he spoke to us in the last facet. And we forget to seek his face. And then what happens is we come up a mundane spirit if we're not careful. And when we have that mundane spirit, we start to step out. And it opens what? Demonic activity. Now y'all know where I come from uh, as far as my background with pills and everything else. And all that crazy uh, loose living it talks about in the Bible, right? From A to Z. See, I, was, I, I understand I've never really met Jesus as a personal relationship, but I do understand as He met me where I was at, and I've been on this journey, I can remember when He would put His finger on something. The hardest times in my life is when I wanted to hold on to what He was putting His fingers on. Amen. See, when God will take and bring conviction, that's putting His finger on something. We have a choice. Not a free will, a choice. We surrender it to Him or we're pretty much going to keep doing it our way. Does this make sense? And this helps us walk this lifestyle of worship. So don't hear what I'm not saying tonight, but I want you to understand that we see that the moment we what? We take and um, we step out in rebellion, we know we've heard God clearly. Now we got to go back to Scripture to help somebody here where you don't start condemning yourself or allowing that condemning spirit to start speaking to your mind or into your ear. It's the fact of this. He says, he, he, how, can, how can you be held accountable for something you don't know about? So if it's in your ignorance and you don't know, that's different. 
But once we know and we begin to continue to act, that stupidity, right? That means we're dependent, and I did this. That's where he spoke to me audibly on my on my um thing, on my uh, couch one time, and he said, "Dustin, quit trying to fulfill my word and allow my word to fulfill you." See, he didn't need it fulfilled again. Jesus done fulfilled it. What I needed to do the moment he put his finger on something, he started convicting me. I need to say, Lord Jesus, I don't know how to quit this. I don't know what's going on, but it says you're all powerful. And now because of Jesus, I have your manifest presence. It says the anointing breaks every yoke. So I speak right now to whatever's trying to bind me, and I say it's bound by the authority of Jesus. I say right now, these thoughts, I, I hand them over to you. He'll say, just take them captive, son. See, that gives me the supernatural ability because of his word, because he's a God that cannot lie. When that comes to attack your mind, or if it's stinking thinking, it ain't got to be a devil. It can just be strongholds and crazy thinking, right? And you done slipped out in the left field. Whoa, well, I take this captive because if I'm not careful, I'm going to be held captive with this. Amen. When you start seeing them pictures and you start fantasizing, you got to, I'll pull down these vain imaginations. Amen. And when I see, I mean, supernaturally, this stuff happens. Amen? Because he's done fulfilled it. When he said it's finished, it's finished. So I mean, everything for that moment is there and it's available. It's just waiting for you to tap in into a relationship as he's put his finger upon it and he's going to say what? Now be broke in Jesus' name. And he ain't just restoring something like re recycle. We recycle pallets, right? And he's not saying we're going to recycle this thing. He says, I'm making it new. Making it new. I'm making it new. That's the God we serve. Amen. Amen? Because I'm not going to show you just symptoms I want to show you the ability to stay free. Get free and stay free. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. All right. Y'all ready? Absolutely. Here's some symptoms of witchcraft. Controlling. Denominate, uh, um, like dominating. Tries to dominate everything. Intimidation. Manipulation. And you can always see a level of, um, the moment you stand your ground, you're going to see an emotional outburst. Now, you see this with a lot of demonic spirits, but with witchcraft and Jezebel, both are very strong of emotional outburst. When they can't manipulate you, they're going to have a, they gonna have a fit, and then they're going to try to turn everything around and, 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 and this and that and everything else. You know what I mean? They're going to try to turn things around on you. So... Controlling, dominate, intimidation, or domination, intimidation, manipulation, emotional outbursts. And these are these are some symptoms you can tell. Witchcraft wants to force its wheels on others. So you gotta understand devils are like personalities, so they come and they intertwine themselves in your personality. We're talking about a demonic force, okay? And so with that, what happens is, and look. And this is going. This is going to take. And this, I'm, I'm telling you right now, this is going to take and go ahead and it's a deal with the religious spirit. Christians can have devils, not possessive, but oppressive. Possessive means it owns me. Jesus owns me. Amen. But if you're ignorant of something, because Paul said, "Don't be ignorant of the devil's devices," that thing can be oppressing you in your soul, and it needs to be dealt with. Does that make sense? We can get rid of witchcraft, but then we might have to deal with the emotional outburst later on. I say there's an initial deliverance. This is what's coming back to the church, y'all. This is how we take a, come awake. And this is how we come a movement, a revival, as deliverance comes back. We believe he's the healer, but we forgot he's the deliverer. Amen. See, we just focus on the one that's locked up right now, but I, what about the one sitting in the front row um, that needs deliverance from the religious mindset or needs deliverance because they can focus and tell you the symptoms or the, out, the outburst everybody else is having, but they ain't postured their heart to the Lord in so long they can't remember and pride and offense and, uh, and all this stinking thinking has just overwhelmed them. Weekly. I get out my, I call it my maintenance scriptures. Psalms 139, 23, and 24, and I prophesy them over 
and the Lord puts his finger on it, I'll go over there to Psalms 51 and I'll prophesy it over me. And I'll say, if there's anything trying to oppress me or anything oppressing me that I don't know, I say, you release me now. I bind you up. I am cleansed, cleansed by the blood. It no longer has a hold on me. See, this is the word of God being alive and active. And this comes maturity when you don't need somebody every time you come under attack to lay hands on you to break something. You say, no, I got work to do today. I, am, I know I'm tired, I'm fatigued, but it's a different level of fatigue. You know what I mean? It ain't because I work um, 16 hours. Um, the reason I'm so tired. I'm talking about it. I've got such an oppression. I don't even feel I can't think straight. I don't feel like doing anything. I just rather lay in bed. No, I command the atmosphere to shift right now. I command everything in my belly right now. Jesus said the one the Lord says free is free indeed. I command my body, my soul to respond to the word of God. Yes, yes. When you can speak that, not Lord, I just need your help. Look, I'm not against it. I, there's times that's what I cried out in this part of But there's times I just got to get aggressive and say, you know what? I'm not staying here anymore. Amen. Because my home ain't here. We're passing through here. This is a place that now restored in Him and we have His presence and if we operate from the third heaven out of Him then His manifest presence can show up and say look, depression can be dealt with. He is a deliverer. See society in the world and I'm no doctor by no means but I know the healer that come to heal every disease and I had anxiety attacks. I was bound by anxiety. That's the reason I continued. You call it. I fight and fill this room until Shane can cut that down a little bit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This is my point. When you can understand that you can speak in the Word and remind God and watch Him move. In you instantly. It'll mature you enough that you know no matter what it looks like and if it even gets worse in the natural for somebody else you're praying for, you know it's the process of God and what He's called you to do. And it's His way of how He wants to deliver somebody. It's His way of how He wants to heal somebody. It's His way. See, so many times we can see addiction in family. But I tell everybody, when somebody's addicted in a family... Whether you're married into it or you're born into it, whatever it is, everybody has to begin to grow or, or that person will have to be removed out of that blood family for a season or two or three. Why? Because what happens is there's a standard that uh, one that's addicted always lived. Okay? And this because of hurt and pain and all that stuff, if not dealt with in the ones affected from the one addicted, what happens every time they see they just they, they release their words for witchcraft curses. Ah, uh, he'll always be an addict. Well, when's the next time he's gonna realize? When's this? Look, I know this to be a fact, but it's okay. This is what you have to do. You have to realize when fiery darts is coming, you have to remove yourself. You have to say, look, they cannot penetrate the spirit realm into the holy of holies. Anything that's trying to pull me down back in their atmosphere, I break it by the authority of Jesus Christ. I plead the blood against it. I send whatever was sent back to sender. And I say, burn up that spirit. Not that person. It's not against flesh and blood. But burn up that warlock. Burn up that witch. Burn up Jezebel. Burn up that spirit of perversion. But after we get to that, we have to also have this level of saying, you know what? I've learned to break these things that's hitting me and trying to hold on to me. One thing I've learned in my heart, I can't cast flesh out. It's a different, there's something different from that. My apostle says, you can't cast flesh out, son. You've got to take it. You've got to um, crucify that thing. Amen. And I truly believe that's when maturity comes. Alright. It doesn't stay on stage. It doesn't stay on the stage. I'm going to try. Alright. So, I want to bring it to the... Um, okay, witchcraft wants to force its will on others. It draws people into spiritual things, um, not godly things. So when we talk about Holy Spirit, Holy... It's part of His name, right? 
It's the character of God. He's holy. There's nothing, there's no blemish in him. There's no brokenness in him. Okay? Um, but he has all healing and wholeness in him. Okay? To bring you under lordship of Jesus Christ. That's the number one thing for Holy Spirit. I love to shake. I love the fire to hit me. I love for him to fill me and me be drunk in the spirit. But he, the number one reason for all that, when those different sensations and things come um, to our body, we fall because of the weight of God and all that stuff. The number one thing is not for us to have a uh, 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 just a uh, uh, encounter supernaturally, but it's to bring us in further into subjection and uh, our flesh. What into subjection of Jesus Christ? Makes sense under lordship. Okay. So, I want to bring this. If we look at Galatians 5 and 19, we broke down the fruit, uh, the f works of the flesh. And we're only going to hit on one because it's going with witchcraft. Because I want to draw this picture for you, okay? I want you to see how this thing can attack you and try to get you to abort the plans of heaven to try to get you to hand back over your sonship and all power and uh, a subduing power and dominion you have. That's what happened to Adam, right? He handed it over. He wasn't stolen from him. Sorcerer, when we look at that, that means witchcraft. The Greek word pharmakia includes witchcraft, spirit, spiritism, which is attempting to contact the devil. We've seen that earlier. Black magic, calling on devils or evil spirits, attempting magic for evil purposes. Worship of demons and use of drugs to produce spiritual experiences. Okay, so we talked, when I broke that down, what was the one that was back in the 80s and the 70s that was very, uh, looks like LSD. LSD, okay? People would talk about how they would have all these things go on as they would take this, right? They, and they just called it as illusions and all these things. But literally, they're going into the spirit realm. Okay? So what pharmacia, which is pharmaceutical, right? Where we get our word pharmaceutical. We have to be careful because this is all the world can supply you is, is medicine. That makes sense. Jesus, I and mean, I'm not saying that God hasn't given doctors and scientists and all that certain things that have come forth. So don't hear what I'm not saying. But we have to be careful it don't have an end date. Does that make sense? And so with that, my point, I'm not going on that tonight. What I want you to understand is methamphetamines, heroin, pills, uh, roxycodone. It's made. It's, the government says it's okay. Now I know there's a limit and there's things they put on the bottle and all that stuff. Look, we have to be careful. When we're messing with Xanaxes, uh, these sleeping pills, all this stuff that, and I'm not a doctor, but all this stuff the doctor prescribed to you, if you're okay just going on with that, what you're doing, if you're not careful, you're supernaturally going into the spirit realm and it's not through Christ Jesus. What it says in John 10 is, it says you have to enter it through the gate. Okay? Now we understand that's to be saved. But when we go into the spirit realm, we only go through Jesus. We can't go through something else. So we have to make sure we're protected. If you're going and God, and I look, every, every person that's ever had cancer that believes in Jesus and truly believes in the supernatural hasn't had God immediately just supernaturally heal them. Some of them has testified of how great God was and thank God for the process they had to go through chemo. And they probably had to take some pain medicine and things like that. So I'm not sitting here saying this. I'm saying you have to be careful and aware of what Holy Spirit is leading you individually to do. The process that he has you in. Make sense? So, I'm, so I, I don't want you to think I'm shutting down a pharmaceutical or saying this of the devil. I'm saying that's all the world has to offer. Okay? I take, what's that, uh, when you, if, uh, it's an antibiotic, and what is it called? Penicillin. Penicillin. I'll take penicillin. It has an end date, right? But I'm going to tell you what. It comes to anything else, and it has something to disorder my mind. Look, take me on the take me on home, Lord. Because I've already been down that other road. I know what it's like to go into the, uh, into the second heaven. But once you taste the third heaven, whew, why take a lower place? Amen? There's no intimacy in the second heaven. It's just a good time for a moment. And what's crazy that eventually it loses its, its power of that time you spent spend there. It's like they call it chasing the dragon. That first high is never the same high ever again. And if you've been there with me, you know where, what I'm talking about. If you don't, it's okay. What I'm trying to do is help you understand. I know 
people that would never touch methamphetamine, heroin, or anything else. But if they was to have their pain medication taken away right now and believe truly he is the healer, if they was to have it or anything else taken away right now, they would go completely insane. Like I said, I'm not a doctor, but what I got, what I got to help you understand is when they give certain things um, for things, it's not permanently. It's to get you from here to here to where then you can learn to deal with your anxiety. If you're taking stuff for anxiety or things like that, you should be learning some coping skills. Because when you can learn with cope with your coping skills, then you can take and lower your dosage and get off of it. I believe the Holy Spirit will use medicine like that, but I don't see if it don't have an end date. Well, you got to understand. Well, Grandmama's been like this. Yeah, you need to take a. You need to get free where you can clear your bloodline where it don't affect your kids. And that's what we're dealing with, y'all. I know that's a tough word. I know that's heavy. But it's the real. I understand Jesus as being the word that come to heal every disease. That means anxiety. That most, most people die or whatever from anxiety. And overeating all this stuff more. Why they overeat? Because they're anxious. Let's go there instead of drugs. Right? No, it's not. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We teach them about witchcraft or not. <laughs> But the worship of demons and used to drugs to produce spiritual experiences. And there's people that's in a movement right now in the charismatic. It's called um, charismatic witchcraft. They don't care how they get the next high and shake and bake on the floor as long as they get it. They go from conference to conference, from move to move, where they know the supernatural is available. And that, you know, it's almost like the supernatural drug 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 um drug overdose in the supernatural. There is a purity when it comes to the supernatural of God. That's my point. Don't take a second heaven when you have the third heaven. Amen? Amen. So we, why why do I show this as a uh, a, a work of the flesh? Because now I'm, I'm gonna draw this out. We've seen in the old testament that it's a very real spirit, right? Okay, and it was because of rebellion and rejecting the word of the Lord. It's still very present in today. Okay, so this is what it tells us. This is where we're going to camp out and this is where we're going to finish at in Romans 8. Now, context of Romans 8 is intercession. Say, context of 8, context of eight is intersection. Amen. Thank you. So, um, Romans 8 12, it says, Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh. Say, not to the flesh. Not to the flesh. To live, to live according to the flesh. So what is it saying there? It's saying, look, we're, we ain't indebted to this now. No, no longer does it control us. Why? Because we have the one that overcome the flesh inside of us. Amen. And so with that, the moment that, hey, has anybody else had a, a bad attitude this, this week? And this is, what, Tuesday? Hey, it's been times I've had, look, I thank you for your honesty. It's been times I've had a, whoa, 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 Dustin, you don't, we, you, we don't act that way no more. I talk to myself like that. I don't care if they think I'm crazy. <laughs> if they really want to get to know me, they know I'm crazy. <laughs> but I'm getting free moment by moment. Amen. Because He's already made me free. But religion has made it to the point, and this is what the forefront of witchcraft is, religion's made it to the point, just put a mask on that like you got it all together. No point to the one that's got it all together and own where you're missing it. So, 13. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if you live by the Spirit, you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Okay? So flesh, what is that? That's old nature, right? Not just physical, but old nature. Body is what houses us, but our old nature is what Jesus redeemed us from. Our carnality. Alright? So, when we're, when we're talking about killing the flesh, there's, there's I think it's... James, it says, has two different uh, temptations. The first one's in verse 2. The other one, I think, is in verse 14. Um, uh, 13 or 14. Yeah, God can't be tempted. Or God can't tempt, okay? Uh, it's 13, 14. It has two different One is an outward pressure, which can be demonic or the world. 
Okay, so a situation, disruption, um, supernatural, um, uh, uh, you got spiritual warfare going on, stuff like that, um, could be taking place. But it, what I love about it is, is James goes on to show, he says, the reason you can get, you give in to temptation, that outward influence, is because of the desires and the passions in your heart. And the appetites that's in your heart, right? So when he's saying these things come against you, and I love the visual. We can take a thing of toothpaste and we put it, and we put us the stone on it. Um, uh, you know, it pushes the contents out. So God, He didn't heal the tempts, but He allows certain things to come, and when they come, they put pressure against, it and the true contents come out of us. Does that make sense? And I'm talking about our heart. Our spirit looks like Him because of the blood. But what I'm saying is our hearts. Because that's different. That's Cardinia. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. But I want to break this down for you to understand. It's an old nature that Jesus has already paid for, which is our old man. And there is a new man. And we want to what? Acknowledge, hey, I got a bad attitude today. I had an appetite of something that don't look too godly. So he's put conviction and put his finger upon it. And when he does, we have a choice. Now, our will comes into the counsel of our soul, but we want to what? Be led by Holy Spirit for the will of God to penetrate in that moment. Okay? So, how do we put the deeds to death? We acknowledge this is in us. And then we depend on the power of the Holy Spirit to resist and overcome the temptation. Okay, so even after you get free, sometimes I can remember when, I, like, I, I got, I got the, the spirit of perversion dealt with in me. I'm talking about a real spirit, Jezebel. Okay, I'm talking about when it got dealt with in Dustin. When it got dealt with in me, this is what took place. All of a sudden, I had to be led by Holy Spirit, not to put myself back in certain situations. And allow my gateways, my five senses, to open something up where I stepped out from underneath the umbrella of God. And I, look, I wish it was supernatural when that thing come out in that, um, I, I, I just, I, I truly, y'all, I think it was in prayer to God. Because it just loosed its hold, you know what I mean? And I just had temptation after that, and he started to dismantle the desires and the temp, um, the desires and the passion, the um, appetite. But that was a process. So initial deliverance, and then there is a process of this, of our mind. Because the mind's part of the heart, of our imagination. Of our will, because the will was, I will to do that. I was determined to do that. That's how I got pleasure, right? Uh, but now I've got to find the holy side of that pleasure. So now the appetites and how it was done, how things done, and uh, all this stuff is dealt with. Now I've got to learn, relearn God's way, and that's only through His Word, right? Is this making sense for you? Amen. Amen. So, um. That's why there's difference in acknowledging and addressing something. Your responsibility is he convicts is to acknowledge it. Then your responsibility is to surrender it. When you surrender it, he'll address it. Does that make sense? Acknowledge. Surrender. He'll address it. That's, the, that's, the, that's not the greatest way of truly staying in the lifestyle of repentance. Right? It's the greatest way of staying free. It's the greatest way of staying under the umbrella of God. Amen? So, this is why we, we are so focused on allowing the Holy Spirit to address the old man. The heart, mind, will, emotions, and conscience. So, I have a, like a, a diagram um, that I can, uh, that I need to get to y'all. I'm going to put it in a pamphlet or something, but um, heart is like a CEO of a business. You got mind, imagination, will, conscience. and emotion. And then the end is the conscience. And so spirit speaks through the conscience because it speaks to our heart. It tells us that in Psalms 27 and 6. King talking about King David. Heart responds unto the Lord. Um, so that conversation is through our conscience. 
Um, but it also says in the New Testament, I think in the Passion Translation, talking about the Gentiles having a callous conscience. So I think about that. That means callous is protect. What do we want to do in our old nature? We self-protect. We're self-reliant. Right? And so if we're not careful and we don't allow our emotions, which is all of our hurt, to be healed, where we can have true compassion and passion for people, uh, and affection, that's where our, when we have restored emotions come back, um, then also our mind, whatever we're thinking, is where we're headed. That's the reason when you can address something, look, this isn't God. You know it ain't holy. You just need to find the flip side of it. Like, peace and hostility are opposites. I don't want to be hostile with God. I want to stay at peace, so I'm going to get hostile with whatever's trying to take me out of my mind. Make sense? That's the reason King David would say, I hate what you hate. He loves humanity. He made all men, right? All, all, the, all the people. So he loves them, but he hates the sin. So it comes down to the gospel says it's paid for all of that. And now we walk out. Once we become under lordship, he wants to resurrect certain parts of our heart. Not just our spirit. He wants to make us whole. Amen? Justin, I've heard this over and over again. Look, allow it to take and penetrate day by day, second by second. I'll never quit preaching it because it's what he's telling me to preach. See, when you can grab your foundation, which is Jesus Christ, it doesn't matter what everything, everything else just comes. It begins to formulate. You, you won't even know that the fire is coming, and it'll come out of you. It'll hit something. It'll penetrate something. All of a sudden, you won't know what to preach. You won't know what to teach. When you're standing and you walk into Kroger, and all of a sudden, you feel a heavy burden, and you feel what's going on around you. Oh, Lord, you've given me a word of knowledge that somebody's anxious. How, do you want to address this? Yes, son. Well, how do we do it? I need a, now that you give me a word of knowledge, I need a word of wisdom. Because I'm going to jack this up if I, Amen. If I do it. Amen. But being the counsel of wisdom is inside of me. I'm going to tap into it and see the wisdom, the how-to you want to do this. And then once he, Anything that God would show, He wants to fix. Amen. But it comes down to this. Are we going to try to fix it? We can believe he's the healer, but if he wants to take and pull somebody's arm up, and some of the generals of the past would punch people in the belly and they'd get healed. Tumors would leave them. Stuff like that. And I think, I hope I don't get that appointed. But if that's the way he wants to heal somebody, I mean, he's told me, I think, before, I think I moved Haley or somebody over there, you know, like, I'm gonna do it. okay, I'm going to do it. But they got healed. They didn't. I was going to point out, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. That's right, you can, you can laugh in church. It's good for you. It's good for the soul. Amen. It says it's medicine, ain't it? Yeah. Amen. Amen. So, we got to allow Holy Spirit to truly deal with our cardia, which is where cardiac is our main organ in the natural. And we got to understand that that's what He's come to make our heart whole. That's the reason if you got any trauma of the past and it's still sense that when people begin to talk about certain things or you get around certain people, look, it's something you need to do. It's not that if you was the victim, it's not that you don't have valid emotions and valid things that probably happened to you. But what you got to do is learn to break agreement with what happened to you. And quit formulating every relationship after that from that experience and experience the relationship with the Father and what you'll do is begin to live from His perspective, His wholeness, um, uh, His clarity. It don't mean you got to trust Him. This means you got to forgive Him. Yeah. Free Him. Devil, you ain't taking up rent. Blah, blah, blah. From age seven, you ain't taking up rent in my mind no more, my emotions. You ain't going to have that callous part in my conscience anymore where I'm afraid to trust somebody. Else, not them, us. When that God sent them to you. Does that make sense? Thank you, Jesus. Alright. Y'all ready? Anything you want to die, you must start. Anything you want to die, you must start. Because we, we just got it. We'll check our, you know, we read our word, we check it off. We, I read my word this morning. You know how it is when you start coming in accountability. Hey, did you read your word? 
That person loves you enough saying, hey, the importance of this is reading your word. They're not trying to lord, like, lord over you and control you and stuff like that. They just understand if you'll just get in that nutrients of the word, that milk of the word, that then you begin to grow in maturity. That word's alive and active. If you read it, study it, it comes alive and active in your heart, in your soul, in your spirit. It begins to penetrate areas, even things um, that don't feel so good sometimes because we don't walk by feeling. We don't want to feel better. We want to be better. And sometimes being better means a process of pain. And so with that, as we walk with God and we walk with the Holy Spirit as He leads us, that means we have to starve our flesh, right? And quit feeding it. And we have to begin to what? Feed our spirit. Because we're a son and a king, and with a, being a son and a king means we have access. So I have access. Have access. See, what we do is we take our access, we quit living out of what this world does and move into the world of God supernaturally. And look, it ain't as hard as we think it is. It's just our flesh don't want to die. Amen? So, anything you want to die, you must starve. Anything you want to live, you must feed. 14. For as many are as led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Because I didn't want to just show you witchcraft because it talks about it controls and manipulates. But what I want you to understand here when it comes to Holy Spirit, He leads and He guides. He's a gentleman. Look, when I had that pill bottle, He didn't take and make them does all. He has the power to. What he would do is he'd send conviction and try to draw me away from it. Let's go beyond that when we start trying to build ministry or we start trying to build a business or we start doing these things and we just, okay, God, you give me a vision, I'm going to make this work. But now we're trying to operate how we used to do things and God's saying, I, I got a new way. I know it's uncomfortable to you um, to do it this way, but I got a new way. I want to birth something new. I don't want you to be behind the industry. I want you to be what? I'll give you the ability to be leading the industry now. Whew, I feel the presence of God on that. If you'll catch that in the spirit room, y'all, it's going to do some things. It ain't got to be just towards business. It can be anything when it comes as long as it's kingdom and it's holy. Uh, it doesn't matter. All the influences of the world, you can be the one that's leading that guided by the counsel of the Holy Spirit. Make sense? We ain't just talking about addictions here. We're talking about breaking and starving them things out and living from the heavenly realm uh, from where the hills uh, that you've been looking to and you got the wisdom of heaven. you got all of heaven moving with you and there's a word birthed inside of you. It comes forth out of you. And when it does, it begins to manifest in this earthly realm. Hey, that these books is written about people. You know why it was? It's because God supernaturally, that chair, it was a word at one time. It supernaturally come out. What do they get? God waiting for you to intercede and tap into your originality where he can birth that word out of you. Amen? How did me and Ashley have our, our third child? Because we had a baby. It was birthed out of mama, right? So with that, it's the same thing. Uh, through that process, It took a process for Elijah to come forth, right? Uh, it was nine months there, right at it. And so with that, what we got to understand is this. It's the same thing with God. He will take and allow a word to be planted in it, and then it has to be nurtured. We have to feed that thing. We got to have checkups. Like, he had to go to all these checkups, right? And so we had to go to these checkups. Some things had to be dealt with. Look, this is off, and this is off here. So I need to give you a little bit of this to make it whole, right? But we got to take and surrender those, our knowledge. Now, I got this, God. It's so easy to do. All the reason I didn't preach this is because he preached in me first. He do it in me first. You know how to not succeed in a business? Come to me. You know how to succeed in a business? Go to Jesus. Amen. He'll say, son, you want me to build a business. I want you to build a company where you don't have to be present. It means you have influence and authority and it's coming to y'all. But it's a new way. He put y'all in my spirit ever since I started talking about business. But it's a new way. Amen? New method. He's going to birth it out of you. 
Davis, things are tapping in supernaturally through cyberspace and things. And, and you're learning the way, but God's going to give you little words. It's going to go begin. It's going to be a new way. Ha! New platforms. That you'll build. See, for me to stand on this platform, somebody had to build it. We had to put everything in place, right? It's the same thing with social media. Everyone on Facebook's a platform. The Zoom's a platform. These things are platforms. That's the reason God's had you in the intense of where you've been because you've been obedient. If you, as you listen to God, He's going to take and guide you step by step. Remember, Holy Spirit leads. Uh, things you can walk right by. And God's wanting you to take uh, a responsibility of. Amen? Think about this. Now, God don't give nothing like less than. But I'm here to tell you, it talks about as we grow in responsibility, He gives more, right? It's talking about responsibility and stewarding things when I get that. Just because when I walk by and look at it, and I, I think, why that don't quite, that ain't my appetite. That ain't my cup of tea. You know, you know how it is when you go into a supernatural um, time and you're like, whew, this can't be God. <laughs> I, ain't, I mean, I'm talking about it be God. See, you think you can tell God how He's moving now because He moved this way back in 1996, but now He's wanting to move this way. See, it's the same mountain geographically when you look at when it was in the, the thundering and the lightnings and all this to Moses, but when He spoke to, uh, who was it when He, he said in the st still small voice? Same geographical location, a different generation. God speaks in different facets. His move comes. His moves in different ways. It may, it actually it's not going to be through four walls. we got to quit praying, Lord, send them in. We need to say, church, let's get them quick and let's go get them. Amen. Amen. That's how he's formulated it the whole way and all the way. If we hear we intercede or whatever and breaking demonic falls because now God's highlighting them to them. So our sending man needs to quit being repetitious and saying, Lord, I break inside you right now. You spirit of um, a perversion, I break you off by the authority of Jesus Christ. Every fleshly desire die. Every passion die. Every appetite that ain't an appetite towards Jesus Christ die. And you'll watch him come up out. Whew. He demonstrated this to me the other day in a way that so profoundly and so quickly I literally went praying and it was like within 20 seconds. It wasn't a long, long prayer. I wasn't here to learn from everybody for a long time. 20 seconds praying and I cried out to Jesus and I said, He started showing me things of spirit. I broke it. I said, Lord, have your way. You know everything. Break everything trying to hold on to Him. Next thing you know, I turned around and there He was. I said, Jesus, my God, I wanted to run. But I started running, but I thought I was crazy. Right? But that's how intentional God is. And if we can be the same level of seeking and intentional back to Him, guess what? He'll position you that He can be intentional through you. Amen. Amen? Amen. And allow it to demonstrate here in the natural. So He's Spirit, the uh, Holy Spirit leads. So somebody that's rebellious and just goes and do whatever else. I have to, I have to say, because this is the Word of God. Now, I'm not talking about through maturity. He said the righteous fall seven times. That's not what I'm saying. Remember, I said there's some things we're ignorant of. And Haley may have been doing this uh, for so many years. And, uh, and with that, she sees some certain things manifest. But that person might not even have a clue that, like, what's going on. Or they might have a work, in other words, a fruit or a manifestation or something but with that, Haley's going to tap into the wisdom. Let's get to the root of this thing. Let's meet them right where they're at. And that way, my influence. In other words, what's the influence? The grace upon my life. The empowering upon my life will bring conviction. Not because i got to tell them that we're, they're broken and, and messed up and all this stuff. But what I carry, which is Holy Spirit, automatically brings conviction. Amen. And then, you pray. The will of the Father, once they accept, for Him to be not just Savior, but Lord, to lead them against the work in their life the same way. 
Now, I'm not saying we don't say it because open rebuke is better than hidden love. But there's always a timing and place. Holy Spirit will lead you to rebuke. Holy Spirit will lead you to correct. Does that make sense? Amen? See, we've got a mature church. That brings courage to me. That, now, that'll make your flesh mad, won't it? Think about it. If I was to say, y'all need to mature. See, I said, we need to mature, church. But if I was to say, y'all need to mature. See, I'm trying to control y'all. See, I can over, have overcome something by the power of Jesus Christ and all of a sudden come prideful because I've overcome one thing. Now I measure my overcome to your, where your malfunction. And I, I'm not saying that there's times that we don't have to address things. Um, even because God says, I won't take and humiliate nobody. I'll allow that they humiliate themselves. In other words, he put his finger on it long enough and he says, you know what, I love them enough. I, I'll just let them go do what they're going to do. So that's the reason Paul said, turn them back over to the devil. That he shall save their soul. Right? Why is it that a lot of us, not just, I ain't going to say y'all, why is a lot of us standing here today with the testimony of Jesus Christ? It's because the intercession of somebody else that was praying for us. And by that intercession, it held us. That word was alive and active and it kept breath in our lungs. It kept things from overtaking us to the point where it just burned our mind or whatever else completely out. In the moment of that response, then we began to be what? Led. By Jesus Christ. By the Spirit that raised Him from the grave. It's just making sense. It's the same thing in everything we do. We can open the door by a work of the flesh, by feeding it. And with that, we begin to entertain something. If we're not careful, we're supernatural. We're going into the spirit realm now trying to make things happen, but we're not going through the gate. So, for as many are led by the Spirit of God, capital S, these are sons of God. Amen. So somebody continuing the rebellions? They're being led by another spirit. Make sense? That's the reason if you go back up in Romans 12, there it says, now this, this right here is going to shake people. Now I'm telling you, some of the people that I'm real close with, but they don't believe this. But this is the Word of God. Listen to this. It says, for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. If you go to the works of the flesh, it says these that do these things will not inherit the kingdom of God. It's saying I could have met Jesus. In other words, I could have believed on him, but then I left him. He didn't say just say a prayer to me. He said follow me. The Spirit leads. Does that make sense? I go back to drugs and go back to all that crazy living that I used to live in and I'll bust hell wide open. Why? Because he told me. The living God. No false spirit. It brought such a trembling and fear upon me. Look, I'm telling you, but this is the cool thing is, you don't, you don't, you don't know half of how much I messed up. In the midst of all of that, he says, look, I've forgiven you for all this. And I can resurrect you out of this. I love you right where you're at. If you want to get up and follow me, I'll deliver you out of every aspect of the internal battle you go through. This is the gospel. This is what wins lives. Not just words, but transformation of the word. That's the gospel. I believe on you, Lord Jesus, is an entryway. I think it was my wife. She done. She broke this down. I'm about to quit, y'all. Know it's time to go. Um, unless the Holy Spirit wants to do something, then you can leave if you don't like it. Um, <laughs> but this is the point. This is what Ashley broke down. John three sixteen. That's what's most quoted. Come on, Jody. It's one of your favorite ones to quote for us. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, so that they could have eternal life. So say eternal life. Uh, for God so loved the world that He gave, gave His only forgot, uh, begotten Son so that they could have eternal life. He gave His only begotten Son, right? Yeah. Uh, he just got a word to his stuff. I put Him on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> and so when you break this down and truly go back to the context of what believe means, because 
Now we've got these translations and we just automatically say believe. Well, it says in the Word, demons believe he's Jesus. Right? So this is what he, this is what he said. He said this. Uh, our, my wife broke it down and she said, Dustin, a better word in our English term for us to understand this would have been those who submit. Those who submit. Does that make sense? And that's the, that's the part where lordship comes in. And this is what I love about Jesus. How personal He is. And how He met me right where I was at. But how He demonstrates His word second by second, day by day. Amen? So, how, uh, how can we have... Uh, let me go and read this last verse. Uh, these are the sons of God. Verse 15. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry, Abba. So I don't want you to live on pins and needles of like, and you put yourself in a level of legalism and condemnation the rest of days when you take and mess up. No, when you mess up. Now I acknowledge, Holy Spirit, look, I, I, I seen where I had this rotten attitude. What do I do next? It gives you the ability to resist if it's temptation. Temptation, you want to share what you got on your mind. Right? Let's get real. I live real life. I don't know what you I live real life. They sometimes uh, they, they cut me off in traffic and I'd like to just take and blow my horn. Holy Spirit said, don't blow that horn. <laughs> I live real life. Isn't it Dave over? No, that was charity. <laughs> <laughs> that was me. <laughs> Honesty to the live and active tonight. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Cry out the Father. Amen. So, we must have spiritual discipline. What's spiritual discipline? Remember, what we don't feed will die and what we feed will live. Prayer. Prayer will always birth intercession. When you talk with Daddy, you spend time with Him, He intervenes somewhere in you, He resurrects somewhere in you, then He'll show you somebody else that's dealing or struggling with the same thing and He'll give you a burden for them. <laughs> It may not be at first that you even go to that person. It may be that you go to your prayer closet and you lift them up until that mess is broke. Amen? Amen. Sometimes it might be the fact that, Lord Jesus, will you send messengers? Because it's hard to minister to family sometimes, right? Lord, will you send messengers to them to speak to them what I'm praying? Not way I want them transformed or how I want this done but what your word and your will and how Holy Spirit's leading because whatever you're formulating in the word is one or two things it's curses or blessings when it's blessings it comes forth of the fruitfulness of Jesus Christ manifesting in their spirit amen when it's curses you're just locking them down worse amen, amen. God's word we gotta have a standard his name is Jesus amen Got to be in the Word. I believe in the rhema. He speaks to me continually. But hey, when it, there's plenty of times I got to say, you know what? I've never heard that before. I got to find that. Amen? That's how you'll know the difference if it's a witchcraft spirit, a familiar spirit, or any other false spirit if it lines up the Word of God. And the thing is, if it's false, it'll still be in there too. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Personal and corporate worship. Some of you, look, I'm telling you, you know, you're studying your word, you're praying, but you need to get the song of the Lord. You need to cut that music on, some, whether it's instrumental, and just say, Jesus, I ain't moving until you encounter me. And it's not that you're trying to force him or anything else. His utmost desire is to encounter you. And sometimes it takes a level of some time that we have to spend personally there. Not anything religiously set up because religion will help you to function in wounds and brokenness. But worship will help you get free and intimacy begins to take place. Amen? So personal and corporate worship. There's things that happens in private that corporate can't do and there's things that happens in corporate that private can't do. Why? Because you come to the body. Amen? So it might be Jody's overcome something that Dave uh, hadn't overcome and then it might be Miss Barbara's overcome something Jody hadn't overcome. Now, they carry a grace and I ain't trying to point them out but they carry a grace, a supernatural empowerment that they've received and now it can be released out of them. 
That's when it says called the saints forward, sanctified, set apart, killed desires, passions, appetites, transparent to say, hey, I was bound in this, but now I have been redeemed by this. And now by the authority of Jesus Christ, God, by my power, I release this. Because you, the only thing you can release is what you carry. I understand we carry Jesus. And the Holy Spirit can minister and do anything to anybody else. But I'm trying to get you focused um, to the point of the future. How do you focus eternally? It's because you're not looking at the dead man, the old man. You're addressing him where he can come a testimony unto nations. Amen? Amen. And the last one, the one we all love. Who, anybody want to take a punch at it? Which one have I not said? Fasting. I told you. It's the one we love. I was talking to the scripture. Huh? I was trying to talk to the scripture. <laughs> Amen. By prayer and fasting, that's your scripture. Amen. All right. So Father God, we thank you for your love, your power, your glory. We thank you, Father God, for your word is alive and active. Lord, we thank you, Father God, there may even have been sensitive areas, uncomfortable areas, places, Father God, that you wanted to, uh, that you've been putting your hand on, your finger upon. And Father God, I thank you, Father God, tonight for your people, what will acknowledge and allow you to address. I thank you, Father God, that it is not just one individual, but it's all of us. There's only one perfect one. Father God, your word says that they say that we don't sin. Uh, um, uh, that we we're a liar, in it, or it says that um, they're, that virtually we're lost or whatever. So, Lord, I thank you, Father God, for your word is alive and active and moving through hearts. I thank you that you're healing, Father God, emotions. I thank you, Father God, that the spirit of witchcraft, Father God, does not abide in anybody. I thank you, Father God, that it has possession of nobody. But I thank you, Father God, that it's very present in your word that it says it is a work of the flesh. In other words, it is a a manifestation, Father God, of selfness, uh, selfishness. It's a, it's a manifestation of self-reliance, a manifestation of the old man. So, Father God, we starve it tonight. Father God, we put it in subjection by the Holy Ghost. Father God, we say we crucify these deeds, huh? not by mind or power, but by the Holy Spirit. Father God, we say, send your fire in our private time. We say, Holy Spirit, send your fire in our corporate time. We say, Holy Spirit, send your fire in the... Uh, not just studying, Father God, to preach or to know, but studying to live. We say, send your fire. Father God, we thank you right now that in our prayer time, that Father God, there will be such a level of glory that will crush anything that don't look like you and unify us with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Father God, in every area of us. Father God, I thank you right now that you're invading your church in a time of awakening. Father God, as it says in Isaiah 50, I think in 1, Father God, God, it talks about the church awakening, or maybe 52. It talks about awake Israel. Father God, I thank you right now that we have been adopted in. Every one of us in this room, and everybody, Father God, that is not Jewish, truly of, of, of the bloodline, that, Father God, we've been adopted in. And we cry out, Abba, Father. We say that we, we surrender. And we say, lead us, God, us, and direct us. Father God, dismantle, Father God, of what we want to be so deep theology, and deep, Father God, in doctrine, and try to teach everybody and preach everybody in a position. But Father God, the true thing is when Paul said, uh, follow after my example, it was the surrender upon his heart. It was the surrender upon his lips. It was surrender upon his spirit. And with that, it was evident in dismantling everything of his religious background, everything of his culture. And the same thing, Father God, with every individual that you encounter, that Father God, surrender would be continually upon our lips. Surrender would be a, that upon our heart. That Father God, you dismantle every area. I speak, Father God, of anybody caught up, Father God, in addiction. Anybody caught up in these works. Huh? Anybody caught up in witchcraft. I thank you that you're sending your fire now to burn up every aspect of that witch and that warlock. Every aspect, Father God. I speak right now, Father God, that every, uh, every drug house is busted. Every drug house is exposed. I, I even speak right now that the government is legalized when it comes to alcohol and nicotine and all these things, it's still the distribution of people going into the spirit realm where they don't have to feel, they don't have to deal with things. And I say, Father God, today that your word is alive and active. I, I say, dry up the liquor spirit.
stores. Ha, dry up, Father oh God, every aspect. Father oh God, visit the one that's on the street corner because something crazy and traumatic happened to him when he was younger or through life or even through, Father oh God, serving in the community or in the army or even in service. Lord, I say, in, I, I say we lift them up now and that you invade them, release messengers to preach the gospel ha, for people to truly love on them. Father oh God, it says, ha, give those Give them one's food if they're hungry. Give them one's shelter if they have nowhere to live. I thank you, Father God, that we're in a time of reconciliation. I mean, a ministry of reconciliation. And we're in a time that you're bringing this back to the forefront. That this is our foundation. That Jesus didn't come to be served. We're not here to be served. But we're here to serve Jesus. To, Father God, bring a level of your glory into this earthly realm. That people can get free in the name of Jesus. been in the room and if you've been in a room through this and manipulation control dominating and you had major emotional outbursts you may have to lose your reputation for this but if that's been you I want you to come forth real quick come come forth real quick God I want God look God ain't